Wow, uh, there's so many of you. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be here. And um, yes, so today I will talk to you about TypeScript performance, but I will be talking about it from a developer perspective. So something that is not being talked about that often. So a few more words about me. I work on open source at the guild, primarily in the GraphQL ecosystem. I, yeah, I was a lead maintainer of BitJS. Um, over a year ago, and you can find me and like later after this talk, you can reach out to me on Twitter. I'm Alexandra Sess. Uh, so this talk will have three main parts, like an introduction to the topic of TypeScript and performance. Then we're going to talk about ways to debug it and how to improve it. So let's get started with the introduction. What is TypeScript and why are we using it? So here, uh, Josh Goldberg had really, really, really nice slides explaining uh, like in a very nice uh, short way how, uh, how we can benefit from TypeScript. So you can see uh, my button. This is a React component, so it's in the context of React, but it doesn't really matter. And it accepts an on-click, uh, then it's being passed to an HTML button. And basically, without TypeScript, we can pass anything to this component, like just a string or nothing at all, and then we won't know that it's wrong. Like, we will only notice it when we run it in the browser, and it will crash. And what's <laughs> worse, we will possibly know about it when we run it on our client's browser, so when we are doing a demo for a client, and that's not cool. So why we are using TypeScript is to have this information uh, that something is wrong, like way, way earlier. So with TypeScript, we can get notified at build time that, um, oh, this my button component as accepts like an on-click function. This is the signature, and we have to uh, provide function like that. And that can make uh, spotting possible bugs and refactoring much, much easier. So thank you, Josh, a lot for uh, letting me steal two of your slides. He did actually agree. <laughs> I asked. And OK, so going to the topic of performance. So um, usually when we talk about performance, we talk about like runtime performance. How fast are things for our users? How fast are our products? But uh, today I want to focus on us, on developers, because our tooling shouldn't slow us down. Like TypeScript and like the rest of our tooling should, should get us up to speed, because uh, the better the tooling is, the more value we can, we can bring, and the, um, the, 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 the more features uh, we can ship, and our clients are happier. So, oh yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I will. I always do it. I always wear the same earrings every single day, and I always forget to take them off <laughs> for a talk. Uh, OK, sorry about it. I hope it will be better now. OK, so I, I like this topic of uh, like compiler performance, because this is quite important. Like When we have uh, like lagging editor on when, when, we are, when we have to like wait for a compiler to, to, to type check our project, it, it can be quite annoying if it takes time. Or when we have to like restart the extension host or TS server in our editor, it's all quite like tiresome and possibly. We don't want that. So um, I want to show you one thing. So my first demo. Uh, this is something that I had a lot of problems with like in the past, like a few years ago. And I don't know, maybe it was 2017 or 18. So basically, I have this um, parse with spread. And basically, there is like, uh, there's a bunch of spreads. Uh, they're, they're, like the, this object here isn't, uh, it doesn't have a lot of properties. but there is uh, there's a lot of spreading going on, and the thing is that uh, it used to crash. If I if I wanted to run like a TypeScript compiler on this file, on this like single file, it would crash with out of memory error. And then if I switch to uh, to a recent version, it just works. We don't even have to wait for it. So I'm showing you this because this is one of the examples of something that got fixed because TypeScript team improved 
uh, a lot of things regarding the compiler performance. And especially in the last few months, they were pushing it. Uh, like they, they, they were doing a lot of work around performance. And also when I was... Uh, when I, was, when I started thinking, like doing some research for this talk, I opened uh, Hasfira console because I used to work there. It was a familiar code base. It was huge. And I ran a type checker. And it was quite slow. It was 30, almost 35 seconds. And then like before even like debugging or trying to improve something, I just updated to the latest version. And it was like 12 seconds. And I, I did nothing else. So why am I even telling you this? Uh, firstly, because we should all appreciate the work of the TypeScript team. They are doing a lot of things. So even if you think sometimes that TypeScript is slow, they, uh, they, they probably already have it on the roadmap. And the other reason is that this is my first takeaway, to keep your TypeScript up to date. And uh, because like sometimes you may face some issues and they were already fixed in the latest version, you can use tools like Dependabot or something else to keep your dependencies uh, up to date. And yeah, so I could potentially end here and just tell you like keep your TypeScript up to date and that's it, like it will solve most of your issues. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. That was a very short talk. <laughs> uh, but it's not always enough. So I want to show you another, uh, another example. Uh, yeah, I think this is the one. So what I have here, I will make it slightly bigger in a second. I will just find, okay. Okay, so what I have here is a simple page that renders uh, one, two, three, four buttons. And basically, uh, I, I'm using styled components here. Um, I have my base button um, using Mimo from React. Uh, there's a styled from styled components. And yeah, there is some uh, type inference going on to, to, to infer the like, props. And I also have like big button created out of that button and big anchor button and uh, that is created out of the big button. And I actually, okay, I'll make this one bigger. So I run the type checker and like type checking this project takes almost 14 seconds. And like imagine this, like this is a simple page, like four buttons. Like imagine if we had eight buttons. Like it, <laughs> it would get really, really bad. So, um, so this is what I want to talk to you about today. Like, uh, we, like it, it, it's like when you think about it, it's quite logical that if, when your project grows, then you'll have more performance problems. But it's not always the case. This is like minimal project. Um, so. Before like diving into debugging and improving, I also want to talk about the compiler because um, I, like the, the reason I want to talk to you about it is that it may it will make it easier to pinpoint like at where we have problems and like what exactly we have to improve and uh, and earlier debug. So what is TypeScript compiler? Basically, it takes some TypeScript files or JavaScript files if you have that, um, and it. Uh, if you want to emit f files, it will produce you with like JS or DTS. And if there are any issues, it will produce errors. There are different kinds of errors. So how it all works, it starts with a program. This is, uh, this is something that has like all the compilation context. It takes your files that you want to be included and the TS config. So then the next step is scanner. So what scanner does, it looks at your code character by character and it converts it into a stream of tokens. So for example, it will, uh, it will notice that there's a cons keyword, that then there's like maybe an identifier, string uh, type keyword, and so on. Um, and then the next step, parser looks at this stream of tokens and creates an abstract syntax tree. Um, and basically there are a bunch of rules like that this like that um, 
that the, the, par the, the parser knows about, like how to create that tree. Uh, but more or less, you can think about it like, oh, there's a cons keyword, and later, the, later on, there's an equal token. So it can deduce that it will be a variable uh, statement. Uh, if you want to like play with that and like see how the uh, AST looks like, uh, you can use tools like TypeScript, AST Viewer. There's also AST Explorer, and uh, you can like uh, type some code, or uh, you can just paste code and see how the uh, how the tree looks like. And then uh, the next step, which is quite interesting, is Binder. So Binder, uh, it has this abstract syntax tree, and it goes through it to pick up some information that will be used later on. So for example, what it does is for each node in that tree, it applies additional metadata. Uh, the metadata can be about like the types or like the scope, the environments. Uh, it keeps track of the uh, of the scopes. And uh, like another interesting thing that is that that it does, it, it always sets up parent nodes on each node. So basically, like it's relatively easy to go down the tree, but the type checker, like like the, the step that. It, that uh, runs later often has to go like up the tree. So this is why uh, by having those parent node references, uh, it will make it easier for the type checker. So then we have yeah, then we have that type checker, and um, and like about those parent nodes, this is useful because for example when you are like in um, I know, like there are there are two main responsibilities for the checker. Like one is to see if types are um, that that they 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 are the same basically, and the other one is to infer the types. Like if there are gaps, it has to infer like what is what is the type. So it, if it sees a node and there is like no no type attached then it may go like up the tree to see, oh, maybe there was an explicit type declaration or maybe there was some like, information uh, like higher in the tree, and then like it knows what will be the type of the node uh, lower in the tree. So then we have transformers. So uh, depending like what, uh, what target you have and like what syntax you use, it will run different transformers. And basically, like for example, for generating uh, JavaScript, it will strip all the type information from the AST, and to generate DTS, it will strip all the JavaScript information from the AST. And finally, we have the emitter uh, that produces the files. Like So this look kind of like step by step. In reality, it's, it's, it's way more complicated. There's like a lot of back and forth, but this is more or less what's uh, going on. So, uh, if you want to see some of those steps uh, in action, you can actually go to, to the TypeScript Playground, and there are a bunch of uh, plugins. Like, there's a scanner plugin, there's an AST plugin, there's also like transformers plugins. So you can see like what transformers are applied uh, for to, to to your code. And okay, now uh, the question is, what's the best way to be fast? And you can think about this question like in general, like if you have like a, link, a long to-do list and you want to be done with the day, like what's, what's, what do you do? Well, do less stuff. And uh, the thing is that um, we can't eliminate the steps, the compiler steps that I was talking about, but we can make it do less work. So now uh, we're going to debugging. So. Uh, so we will actually know how to make it do less. So uh, there can be a bunch of issues with your TypeScript project. So um, the first, like uh, probably when you notice that you have um, performance issues, is that maybe your build takes a lot of time or your IDE is very slow. So what now? And usually, the first thing I do is I run diagnostics. So uh, there are those two flags. There's diagnostics that will give you like um, a short summary of how much time the compiler spends on different steps. And there's also an extended version. Uh, this is an output from uh, from the shorter one from diagnostics, and you can see how it, like there there's this parse time which uh, applies to the parser. There's like a bind time and uh, and so on. So now like what to look for. So um, 
I split it into three sections. Like the first one is like looking into the uh, like the, the the number of files and lines of code. So if you see that it doesn't really correspond to the number of files you have in your project, or like this is like way too high, like you have like smaller project, then it may mean that something is wrong with your configuration. So uh, there's one other useful flag. It's list files. It will print all the files that are being picked up by the TypeScript compiler. So uh, it's not a particularly friendly output, so you can use uh, uh, this web tree map CLI to visualize it. And it will, uh, it will show something like this. It will open it in, the, in, in your browser, and you will see like a vi visualized uh, information on like how, uh, how big the files are and like what is included. And then uh, something slightly related, like uh, high program time and uh, write time. It can also have something to do with misconfigured TS config, like specifically the uh, include and exclude uh, settings. So um, another useful flag is to is, is, is show config. It will print what is the final configuration that TypeScript is using. Because sometimes when you are using like extends and you're extending like one config after another, then it's like it, you, you can get confused. Like you don't really know like what is what is the final thing. So you can use this show config. And now something that is most interesting is uh, like the actual check time. So there are a few tools. And the first one is Generate Trace. And here I want to show you a demo. Uh, so I'll close this. Um, so the command is, I hope this is big enough. Um, you run the TypeScript compiler uh, with, with no emit, because I don't care about the, uh, about the uh, like actually generating files. I also said incremental to false. I will talk about it a bit more later, but basically the goal is so that TypeScript doesn't cache anything and I have uh, actual results. And then I run generate trace and I provide an output directory uh, like where this trace should be generated. So I already ran it before so that we don't waste time right now just looking at it. And um, this, oh yeah, here is this out there. And basically, it generated two files. Um, the first one is trace.json, and the other one is types.json. So now, what we can do is we can um, open it in the browser. And specifically, we can go to, to the Tracing, yes, I'm not sure why it got smaller. Uh, okay, can I do this? Yes. So we can go to this tracing tab. We can also use uh, this new Perfetto UI, but I'm, I'm quite used to this one. And now what I can do is to load uh, this trace JSON in the browser and we will have it visualized. And we can, right now we can see what is going on in our project. So if I, like, without zooming in, like we can see that something around here is wrong and around here. So what I can do now, I will actually zoom in. And we'll make it bigger. Maybe not that bigger, because I don't see. OK, so basically, uh, what is here is check source file. So um, uh, at the bottom of the screen, you can see some additional metadata. Like you can see uh, uh, like the start, the wall duration, and solve time. But you can also see like what, like what, what is the corresponding file that is being checked. And uh, like we know that there is uh, this use has paid plan.ts. And then if we go uh, lower, we have uh, like check expressions. So TypeScript is like doing some work about like around checking like expression to see if the types correspond to one another. And uh, here the metadata is slightly different. We have uh, the start position and the end position. 
and uh, then like we can like uh, we can narrow it, we can go down and narrow our issue to like a particular position. Now we are in a different file, and uh, this is router.tsx. We have the position start and end. So I will uh, open this file. Okay, I think this is the one. Yes, and. Um, yeah, and I can see that uh, there's something already going on, uh, and I have this information: the infer type of this node exceeds the maximum length of the com uh, the maximum length the compiler will serialize. An explicit type annotation is needed. So now, why is that useful? Because like normally, I like how else would I be able that this is like how how else would I be able to notice that this is the bottleneck, like. Uh, you know, like it, it, it may like pass during the, the compilation, and possibly like I don't know. Let's say you are away for vacation, and then you're back, and you know, like there were many many commits, many changes to the project, and you notice that TypeScript is slow. And then like how do you how do you like uh, you know figure out what, what what happened? Like you would need to go through every commit, and uh, and like using generate trace, like the like one thing that it's very useful for is to like uh, helping you go directly to the file that is causing problems. But I also want to show you a slightly different thing. So here we had this check expression, but you can also see that this is quite colorful. We have different kinds of boxes. And uh, oh yeah, here we have something like check the third node. So sometimes it's um, it's kind of like it's it, it even for me like how to, hard to like say like w w what is deferred node like what is this check doing so uh, something that I something that I do is like I actually go to the um, to the TypeScript uh, source code and I try to find it in this there's um, in SRC there's a compiler. Uh, or I'm not sure if this is in SRC, but basically there's a compiler directory and there's a checker file, and uh, yeah, and I, I try to find like the corresponding uh, function. So here I, I, I found some information that um, oh, I got lost. Uh, that this uh, deferred node has something to do with this. So like uh, ensuring that. Um, that like in, in such cases when you reference a function, uh, uh, reference a constant inside of a function, then it's being type checked properly. But anyway, going back to the trace. So uh, yeah, I have this check the third node, check variable declaration. Uh, here I also have the same metadata like position start and end. Uh, I think with check expression is the same, but now we have something slightly different with structure type related to. So this is comparing the types, and here the metadata is source ID and the target ID, which means like the source type and the target type. So now, uh, like, what can I do with it? Like, I still don't know. Like, what what are those IDs? And this is when the the other file this. Um, uh, this types JSON uh, comes into play, and um, if you're using VS Code, there's uh, this uh, go to line thing. I don't remember the shortcut. Yeah, and basically I can uh, I can use that ID, and I can see what is the type. It's something like deep mock proxy, and uh, I can see like some intersection types. There are also IDs I can possibly find in this. Uh, types JSON file, and uh, there is also uh, metadata with like uh, first declaration, and I can see that this is like from uh, Vitas mock extended, and uh, yeah, so this is my source ID, and I can possibly do the same with the target ID, and basically like you can go uh, kind of back and forth between this output and this uh, types.json to see what uh, what types are problematic. And uh, something that can help you with that, like to, to, to make this faster and to like not go through it manually, there's a tool called um, Analyze Trace. So I will just run it. So this is uh, typescript slash analyze 
trace. I also have to provide this output directory. And it will print information about the bottlenecks, bottlenecks in the project uh, out of the box. So I can see, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot going on. Uh, yeah, so we're not going to go through this, but uh, basically it, tell, it will tell you like what files are problematic. Like, oh, it also, uh, the thing that we were seeing before, like this use has paid plan uh, is also here and it also tells you like what expression you have to check uh, and it tells you like what's the line, what, what character and so on. So going back to the slides that are, I guess here. Okay, I will hide this. Uh, yeah, so there is this analyze trace that is very useful. And now, uh, so this is more or less how you can debug uh, what's going on, but now how to improve it, like what to do once you know that, oh, this type is too slow. So uh, there are a bunch of ways in like how, uh, how it can be problematic. Like the first one is it doesn't work the way it's intended to. And usually it has something to do with misconfigured TS config. So uh, like the, the, the thing to do here is to check the configuration. Uh, you can go to uh, typescriptlang.org uh, slash tsconfig. It will have, like, like uh, you will see a bunch of references to like, how to configure it properly. Uh, then the next thing is that it works the way it's intended to, but it's doing too much work. So now, what can we do? Uh, the first thing that is quite useful is naming complex types. So I'm going to show you, I have two examples. I will show you this one because it's the newest one. Um, so basically, uh, this is a Redux uh, toolkit repository, and they had this very, very huge type. There's, there are a bunch of conditionals. Um, they are extending the type, and there's, there's a lot going on. It was causing uh, performance issues. And if I, find, I can find a PR, yes, it's here. So, and I will show you the difference. Um, yes, yeah, so what they did, uh, was to extract some parts of this huge type into separate type aliases, and then uh, and then uh, use it like that. So they they are extending like by by uh, using the type aliases. And why it works and why it, like I, I think it caused like a 60% performance improvement uh, from what Mark said. And why it works is because. Um, now, like, like b before, with this huge type, every single time this type was used, TypeScript had to like recalculate everything. And there was like, we saw that there was a lot going on, so there was like a lot to calculate. And by extracting it to separate type aliases, TypeScript is able to calculate each of them once, cache it, and then it doesn't have to do all the work from scratch. Uh, so this is it. Now, um, the next, uh, creating reusable type aliases, which is slightly related. Uh, here I have an example from Ant Design um, Component Library. So basically, the thing, uh, if I can go possibly here, it will be uh, better. So, okay, so, um, so basically, it's like the, the idea is very similar. Like, uh, uh, Daniel Rosenwasser from the TypeScript team uh, opened the, this PR to create a new uh, type um, forward ref base component because previously uh, they were like using an anonymous type so and like the, the types around that in React are complex. So again, TypeScript had to recalculate everything from scratch for, uh, I think this, this is for icons. So like for, and they have like a bunch of them. Yeah, there are a lot of files here. So for every icon, it had to like recalculate it and there were like huge unions. And by creating this like single type alias, and using it uh, like that, so you can he have another example here. So instead of like doing export default, this React forward ref and calculating what would be this uh, type from those generics, uh, they now uh, export like this uh, new type alias. And if I can go back to the description again and see the improvement. Uh, 
it loads. Yeah, so what was the improvement in like the check time went from six seconds, uh, like 6.19 uh, to 4.37. And okay, then uh, another thing is to try to avoid uh, like statements that are like import, path to file, and some type. I will show you a quick example. Uh, Here's a small PR I made to Nuxt, which was like it was a very small improvement. But if you have like bigger projects, it will uh, it will it will like actually cause uh, your project to type check faster. So basically, if you see that syntax like uh, that, uh, you have it like typed or like TypeScript generated it in uh, declarations that there is a type of and import. There's a path and. Uh, and like the um, the type that it wants to use, uh, it may also cause TypeScript to do more work because, um, like, first before generating it, it needs to like see what's the what's the path, what's the optimal path. Uh, it needs to create additional AST nodes and so on. So, like, by providing explicit declarations, you can also save um, save the compiler a bit of work. Um, and like sometimes there is no easy trick. Like you actually have to refactor your code a, a little. So I showed you before this uh, example with styled components, and um, and like there was there was no easy fix for me here. Like something I did to 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 improve it was to actually uh, like not use those higher order functions from styled components, but uh, but write the code in a slightly different way. So now I have this button, I, uh, I, I, uh, I type the props like explicitly, and um, this is just a simple function right now. And when I use it and when I create other, yeah, this is just uh, like a component made of this uh, button component. If I try to run it, I think this is PNPM good. It should be much faster. Yeah, it's two seconds thirty-seven. It's still not perfect. There, there are like uh, I could probably I don't know ditch style components, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's it's much better than those fourteen seconds. Um, okay, where are my slides here? Okay, and um, I'm not sure if I have uh, that much more time. So I will just fast forward, and uh, yeah, I will go to this one. So uh, another thing is that um, sometimes you may want to use interfaces over type aliases, and like in most cases, it doesn't matter unless you want to extend the types, because like in the first case, when you're extending type aliases, then TypeScript will create these huge unions, and then the TypeScript will have to be compared like well, like one element by by the other. And in case of interfaces, it will create a flat object, and like some of the relationships between the types will be cached, so uh, that will also occur um, like a better performance. Okay, and now, uh, so let's say you did all of that, you fixed your TypeScript configuration, you applied like all the, uh, the refactoring or some like uh, type fixes, but it's still slow. So what can we do now is we can use an incremental flag. So basically by setting it in co your compiler options, um, you tell TypeScript that it can cache information about the compilation. So the next time when it has to like recompile the project, it will only do like the minimal required work. And it will only like recompile the files that actually need to be recompiled that were changed. And if it's still bad, you can open a new issue. And like remember, when you're opening the issue, uh, provide the trace output, provide like a reproduction link to a repository if it's public, and like as much information as possible. So to summarize. Um, I uh, I hope that like uh, all of these tools will be useful for you. Um, I mean, I hope that you won't have those performance issues, but if you do, I hope that you will yeah, use this knowledge. And uh, and um, also, if you if you want to like dive into this topic, you can visit my my website. I, I, I think I will have a link later on, and like everything that I was talking about will be uh, there. But another thing that is important is that like don't get fixated. 
about it because there's always something to be improved and there's possibly always something to like uh, like 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 make make the compilation type type checking uh, faster uh, but don't 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 forget about the actual project and if you want to, if you're interested in uh, like um, I know, like uh, monitoring like the changes in your projects. I made this very, very simple uh, GitHub action. It's uh, TSC Diagnostics Diff. So basically, for every PR, it gives you a difference uh, between like the uh, your your main branch and the uh, the one that you're changing. And also uh, something that I wanted to <laughs> actually announce during this conference, uh, me and uh, Daniel Rowe and a few other people um, are working on something called TSPerf. So our goal for that is to like everything that I was talking about, like for example, like um, going over this trace. It requires a lot of manual work, and it requires a lot of back and forth between the browser and the trace JSON and the types JSON to like figure out what types are involved. And we want to make it easier, and we want to make like a set of tools, uh, CLI, uh, GitHub Action. Uh, like um, I, I'm also like I was thinking about a web application to visualize it better. And uh, and the VS Code extension, so you can scan this QR code and follow <laughs> our journey. And for now, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you.